Well, hello everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us here today. My name is Lance Liberti and I will be your presenter for today's educational workshop on non-surgical treatment alternatives for osteoarthritis of the knee and degenerative joint disease. Before we begin, because we're welcoming, welcoming people from all over the country and in many different states, I do want to point out that at any point, if you're ready to take advantage of booking your risk-free, no-cost consultation, please type in your name, the city and state that you're located in, and the best phone number to reach you at in the chat box so that one of the new patient scheduling coordinators from the facility closest to you can reach out and schedule that risk-free, no-cost consultation for your benefit. Today's educational presentation is co-sponsored by Joint Restoration Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Before we begin, I'd like to speak a little bit about the purpose of today's workshop. And the purpose is twofold. The first purpose is quite simple and straightforward, which we're here to provide help. We're here to talk about non-surgical alternatives that might help to provide relief and avoid the need for knee replacement surgeries, even if other treatments like oral NSAIDs, pain medications, and cortisone injections have failed to work for you. The second reason we're here, though, is to provide hope. And that's actually why I'm speaking to you here today, because I, too, was once walking in your shoes suffering from chronic degenerative osteoarthritic knee pain. In fact, I was told that I would require a total knee replacement of my right knee over 20 years ago. You see, I played high school football. In my sophomore year, I was blocking on a kick return, and one of the opposing players got blocked into me. And not only did I suffer that impact, but when I went down, my foot was stuck underneath them. So I had a lot of rotation and I partially tore three ligaments and com completely tore uh, another ligament in my right knee, which had to be surgically repaired. A few years after that repair, it failed and I lost most of the function in my right knee. In fact, I could barely bend my right knee. I was using crutches to get around. I went and received an MRI to find out what was going on. And it turned out that I had developed early onset osteoarthritis with medial bone on bone contact, meaning the inside of my right knee joint, uh, the bones were rubbing together and there was no cartilage left. At that point in time, I was told the only thing that would work for me would be a knee replacement surgery. However, that turned out to be wrong. Uh, thankfully for me, I was working for a healthcare advertising agency and one of the uh, clients I was working with, his father was a doctor of osteopathy working at a pain management clinic in Midtown Manhattan. And he invited me to fly up and stay with him to receive the injection of something called hyaluronic acid, which is a medication that's been used to treat arthritis in the United States since 1997. So I had an opportunity to receive these injections. And after the first injection, I had some reduction in pain. By the third injection, my pain was gone. By the fifth injection, I was running and jumping, doing things I hadn't done in years. It was nothing short of a medical miracle. And I thought to myself, wow, there's got to be other people out there like me that could benefit from this. And I actually convinced that doctor to open a healthcare clinic where we developed a now patented protocol called the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol, which is used by over 200 clinics in 40 US states and has successfully treated over 600,000 people suffering from osteoarthritis of the knee over the last 15 years. And that's where today's co-sponsors come in. Each of these facilities have been trained and certified in the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol and have experience helping others that have not been able to find a solution for their knee pain find relief. Joint Restoration Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma also takes a multidisciplinary approach, including on-site physical therapy, to provide not only a reduction of pain, but improvement in function to get you back to the activities you used to be able to do and no longer can without pain and dysfunction, including things like golfing, dancing, walking, uh, and other household activities. So now that we've spoken about the co-presenters of today's presentation, I'd like to get into the problem that most of us are facing here today, which is knee pain. Knee pain is quickly becoming the most common musculoskeletal disorder in the United States. In fact, by 2040, it's going to overtake back pain as the most common source of pain in our country. It already affects about one in four adults in our country, and it's one of the leading causes of surgery in this country as well. In 2010, nearly 5 million people re received knee replacement surgeries, and that number continues to go up, up until the past few years with the pandemic here, where the number of knee replacement surgeries actually went down uh, for the first time in recorded history, because you couldn't go in for these procedures. They were considered elective, non-essential surgeries, and now it's created a backlog where in certain parts of the country, you may have to wait two to three years to get a joint replacement surgery. So more and more the people we're helping 
are not just those trying to avoid knee replacement surgery, but those simply looking for some relief while they're waiting to have access to that surgical replacement. Now, as I said, arthritis affects about one in four people in our country, and it's continuing to grow. It affects two in three people who are overweight. And in addition to being very common, it's also one of the most costly conditions facing our nation's healthcare system. The National Institute of Health estimates that about a quarter of a trillion dollars are spent annually on the treatment of knee pain on osteoarthritis in our country. So if you're wondering why your Medicare premiums and things are going up year over year, this is actually one of the contributing factors. Knee replacement surgery is very costly. It averages about $42,000 per name. And when you think about the fact that there's millions of people getting that in our country each year, it is definitely a cost burden to our nation's healthcare system. So in addition to being the most common form of arthritis, what else is osteoarthritis? Well, it's a degenerative condition that results in pain, swelling, and loss of movement of the joint. <clears throat> and there are many reasons why it develops and why it is so common in the name. The first is basic wear and tear. We've all been walking since we were about a year old. We're putting a lot of miles on our knees, if you will. The older you are, the more you use your knee, the more likely you are to develop this breakdown and osteoarthritis. It's also at very high risk to injury, not just catastrophic injuries like what I suffered playing football or people that fall and hit their knee, or maybe you're in a car accident, your knees hit the steering wheel or the dashboard, but also little micro traumas. You know, if you bang your knee on the coffee table walking through the house, those little traumas add up and they actually damage these tiny cells of the knee capsule called synovocytes, which are responsible for producing the cushioning and lubricating synovial fluid inside of our joints. Age is a contributory factor. The older we are, the more likely we are to develop osteoarthritis. Also obesity, the more we weigh, the more load over time, the more likely the joint is to wear down. And last but not least is a joint deformity called a varus or valgus deformity. That's the clinical term for it. You might be more familiar with the common term, knock kneed or bow legged. This is where your joints collapse either inward or outward and it affects most people by their late 30s to early 40s. About 85% have that inward collapse versus about 15% of people that have that outward collapse. And that's why the joint tends to wear out on one side versus the other. And a good analogy for this is if you've ever had the alignment go bad in your car, you may have noticed that one side of the tire was wearing out much more quickly than the other. And if you didn't do something to fix that alignment, it could eventually lead to a blowout where you had to replace the tire altogether. The cartilage in our knee joint is not unlike this tire. When we have this uneven load, it wears away much more quickly. And if we don't correct and even out that load, it can eventually end up in a situation where surgery really is your only option because you've completely destroyed all that underlying cartilage. Now, the good news is even for people that have been told they're bone on bone, the treatment we're gonna to discuss today works the majority of the time. And the earlier you catch the disease, the more likely you are to have positive results. So now I'd like to take a look at the difference between a normal knee and an osteoarthritic knee. So you can better understand what we're dealing with. And if you've had any x-rays or if you receive x-rays when you come into the office for your consultation, you'll better be able to interpret what you're looking at and make a decision for your health. So in a normal knee, this triangular substance here is your kneecap or your patella. This shiny white substance is called hyaline or articular cartilage. It's a hard cartilage similar to the consistency of your fingernail that covers the end plates of the bone. This blue structure here in between, this is your meniscal cartilage, a soft and cushioning layer. And then around all of this, you have a synovial capsule full of fluid that keeps everything cushioned and lubricated and gliding next to each other nice and smoothly. As you develop osteoarthritis, this joint space and these structures break down and wear away, eventually resulting in exposed bone and overgrowth of bone, something called osteophytes or bone spurs, which is your body's response to try and restabilize the joint. But before all that breakdown happens and the cartilage and bone wears away, this disease actually begins with the fluid that's inside your knee joint. You see, our joints are not like the hinge of a door where there's actual metal touching and grinding taking place the bones in our body actually glide next to each other. That old nursery rhyme about the knee bone connected to the shin bone actually isn't true. Those bones aren't connected to each other directly. They glide next to each other. And this happens because of this very unique fluid that we have. 
And it's not like water, it's actually a gel-like fluid. And as you put pressure on it, it gets more dense and it resists that pressure and acts like a, a, like a, um, a shock absorber, like a hydraulic fluid, if you will. So this is what that capsule looks like in a normal name. As this fluid begins to break down and wear away, it can no longer cushion and lubricate the joint or act like a shock absorber. It starts to become more thin and water-like, not thick and gel-like any longer due to not having enough of the active ingredient, which is hyaluronic acid. Then as your bones move closer together, the friction can break down the cartilage and cause this loss of function, this pain, this instability that you may be dealing with. So now I'd like to show you some real x-rays of actual patients that have gone through the advanced arthritis relief protocol to further understand exactly what we're dealing with here, not just in uh, anatomical drawings, but on actual real people. These x-ray images were donated from two of our certified facilities in the Orlando, Florida area. Now I'd like to start by showing you a normal knee because it's hard to know what's wrong if you don't know what right looks like. I remember when I got my MRI, it was used almost more like a prop to scare me into agreeing to surgery versus an educational tool to show me what I was dealing with and give me the information to make my own choices about what was best for my joint and my health. So these two images here are a front to back view and a side view of the knee called anterior, posterior and lateral views. In the front to back view, what we're looking at is the kneecap, the patella, is it right in the middle of the femur bone? There's this little channel there that it glides in, almost like how a sliding glass more door moves on the track nice and easy. But if it falls off the track, it grinds and becomes difficult to move. Next to it, you've got your femoral condyles and they should have a nice thick cartilage bed on it. If you look real close, you can kind of see the outline of that thick cartilage bed. It's almost like the fingernail of your knee. In between the two bones, the femur bone, the thigh bone, and the tibia, the shin bone, uh, this is not empty space. On x-ray, the more dense something is, the more bright and white it shows up, like bone. The less dense it is, like fluid or cartilage, it actually shows up black or gray. So what you're seeing here is not empty space. This is where your meniscal cartilage is. This is where your synovial fluid is. A nice thick black band between the bones is actually healthy and normal. You should also be able to kind of connect the dots on the edge of the bone. It should be good alignment. And right in the middle, these two little round mounds here, these are called your tibial spines. And they should be smooth and round like the Appalachian Mountains, not sharp and pointy like the Rockies. Now on the side view, what we're looking at is your kneecap, your patella, and your femur bone, your thigh bone. Is there space between them for them to glide next to each other? Or are they touching? Are they grinding? Are they wearing away? If they are, that's a condition called patella femoral arthritis. So that's a normal name. Here's an early osteoarthritic name. Osteoarthritis is graded on a system called the Kellergren-Lawrence scale. It has four stages. Grade one is early osteoarthritis. And in this early stage, you can see some loss of joint space. You can see that the kneecap's a little out of alignment here as the femur bone's collapsing inward. But for the most part, the knee looks relatively normal. People with early osteoarthritis usually don't know they have osteoarthritis. Maybe their knees are sore or swollen after strenuous activity or with certain types of activities, but it's not an all day, every day pain that they're dealing with. The everyday pain starts to happen in stage two, where the joint space collapses even further, where those tibial spines start to wear away and sharpen, where your body begins to form little bone spurs because as you're bearing this extra weight and this extra impact, your body actually thickens the bone to withstand the impact of these bones now coming together, which they're not supposed to do under normal circumstances. Grade three is where you get to the point where you're probably having to use some type of an assistive device like a walker or getting regular cortisone injections every few weeks and the results wearing off really quickly. This is where you still have some joint space, but barely any. The bone spurs have gotten much larger. The bones are much more further out of alignment. You're going to have a lot of what's called ligament laxity, this instability of the ligaments that surround the knee. So you might feel like your knee might buckle or give way with certain activities. Most people report that, especially as they're going downstairs, feeling like they lose that control and have to hang on to the handrail. And by the time you get to grade four, this is bone on bone. This is where you've completely lost your joint space in one compartment of the knee. I was here 22 years ago. 
Um, we've seen many patients at this stage as well. In fact, I'm gonna show you a pre and post x-ray today of an 86 year old woman who was bone on bone in a wheelchair who had a full recovery and actually was able to return to walking under her own power and getting her joint space back with this treatment we're about to discuss. Now, this slide is here to remind me about knee replacement surgeries. This particular x-ray is of a partial knee replacement where they replace only the part of the knee that has gone bad. Because in most of those x-rays that we looked at, it was one compartment of the knee that had gone bad, not the whole thing. Now, the good news is if you've had a partial knee replacement and you're still suffering with pain and loss of function, you may still be a candidate for the advanced arthritis relief protocol because in a partial knee replacement, the knee capsule remains intact. So we can inject this hyaluronic acid into it to thicken the fluid and cushion the joint once more. Also, if you're facing surgery, talk to your surgeon about getting a partial instead of a total. Partial knee replacements only make up about 5% of the knee replacements that are performed in our country, but they're very effective. I have a little bit of a jaded theory on why this happens. Insurance pays about $14,000 for a partial knee replacement versus $42,000 for a total. So I think it has a little bit more to do with the dollars and cents and not as much to do with being the right or wrong thing. But again, that's just my conspiracy theory. Now let's talk about this treatment, this potential solution for you called the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol. Now that we've discussed the condition, we understand how it happens, the different stages of the progression of that disease. So who's a good candidate for the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol? We designed this patented approach for when other treatments have failed to provide results. If you've been taking Tylenol, Advil, or Aleve, which is acetaminophen, ibuprofen, or sodium naproxen, and that's not providing relief for you. If you have taken six to eight of these pills a day, if you've had multiple cortisone injections or cortisone injections are only providing relief for a few weeks at a time, if you've seen a physical therapist or tried to lose weight and those things haven't worked, if you're on a pain medication like oxycodone or tramadol and you're having to use that just to get through the day, you may be a good candidate for the advanced arthritis relief protocol because we, this is designed to work when those other treatments have failed. It's designed to delay or even completely avoid the need for surgical interventions such as total knee replacements. And it's a specialized approach of physical therapy and home exercise, an unloading knee brace that increases the joint space and stops the friction and destruction of your cartilage and bone, as well as an injection of an all natural substance called hyaluronic acid that bonds with the synovial fluid, thickens it, and helps to cushion and lubricate the joint once more. Now, I'd like to speak a little bit about the things you may have already tried that haven't worked for you, beginning with pain medications. The easiest way to cover why pain medications aren't a good fit for treating osteoarthritis is that they're designed for temporary conditions. If you have a surgery and you're recovering, you might have pain medication to reduce your symptoms while you're healing. If you've been in an accident, it might be given to you. If you have a sports injury, it might be given to you. Pain medications are designed to make it a little more bearable while your body is fixing damage. But osteoarthritis is not going to fix itself. It's a chronic condition that continues to get worse without intervention. So you're going to be stuck taking these pain medications all day, every day, basically forever, if you don't correct the underlying cause. And the longer you use these, the more risky they become. Also, when you're using pain medications, pain is your body's way of saying there's damage taking place. Stop what you're doing. Well, if you can't feel that pain, you can actually make your condition worse. That's why if you've ever watched sports movies where maybe someone's playing football and they hurt themselves, then they get a cortisone injection at halftime. They go out and play the rest of the game. That injury is still there. That damage is still there. In fact, they're making it worse. They just can't feel it right there because they've been given this anti-inflammatory and this pain medication. Over-the-counter medications that don't require a prescription like Tylenol, Advil, and Aleve are not all that different from the prescription pain medications in that they reduce pain and they reduce inflammation. They're not correcting what's causing your problem, rather just minimizing the symptoms and masking the pain. The problem with these medications is also that they're meant for short-term use. And I learned this when my daughter wasn't quite a year old and she had her first big fever and we took her into the emergency room. And the doctors worked her up and said, you know, she got a flu, uh, go give her some Tylenol and four hours later, give her some Motrin. And I said, okay, why both? And the doctor said, well, that'll keep the active ingredient lower. It's easier on the kidney, the liver, et cetera. Okay, great. I go buy the medication. 
I want to make sure I do it exactly right. So I peel the label and I read the full instructions. And I read something that in more than three decades up to that point in time, I had no idea. It says not to be used for more than seven consecutive days. I said, holy cow, I was taking six to eight Advil every day for over a year. My doctor never told me that you weren't supposed to use it for more than a week. That's where it becomes dangerous. Over 30,000 people die from Tylenol in our country every year. A medication that's so safe it can be given to little babies just a few weeks old is killing 30,000 people a year. Why is that? Well, the medication itself is not unsafe, but when you use too much of it for too long of a period of time, it can become damaging and unsafe. So if you don't want prescription pain medications or over-the-counter NSAIDs, looks like surgery is your only option, right? This is what I was once told, and this is wrong. What else is wrong is that surgery is not a guarantee. And I did not know this when surgery was first presented to me. It really almost sounded like it was a guarantee things were going to get better, and that was my only option, and I would be grateful I did it and so forth. But it turns out that knee replacements don't work all the time. In fact, sometimes they completely fail. And this is a question that's being posed by the orthopedic surgical community themselves, not just outsiders. Dr. Kenneth Mathis, chairman of the Methodist Center of Orthopedic Surgery in Houston, a renowned orthopedic surgeon, was quoted as saying that in the next decade, we will see a more than 600% increase in revision knee replacement surgeries. What's a revision knee replacement surgery? Well, that's when they go back in and they cut out the hardware they installed and they replace it a second time because that hardware failed. This happens to about 60,000 people every year because of infections, the implant becoming loose or breaking. And also these results tend not to last. Up to 30% of people that have a knee replacement surgery are dissatisfied with the results within the first year. It's also riskier than you might realize. One in 200 people that have a knee replacement die as a direct result of the knee replacement surgery within 90 days. They didn't get an infection or get hit by a bus. They actually died from the side effects of the knee replacement. And what if you need both your knees replaced? It means there's a 1% chance you're not going to survive that procedure for more than 90 days. I like to explain these odds. I have a little candy bowl with 100 M&Ms in it. And I say, would you like an M&M? One of them's poison and will kill you. People are going to put their hand away as soon as they hear that. Those are the same odds you have if you get a knee replacement surgery. And this is what a total knee replacement surgery looks like. So when a partial knee replacement, they replace only the bad half of the knee. They leave that synovial capsule intact. And we still have an opportunity to do these injections for you if a partial knee replacement fails to provide relief. But in a total knee replacement, they remove that synovial capsule. They put a metal plate on top of your tibia that's screwed in place and anchored into your bone marrow and a plastic or metal cap that goes on top of your femur bone. So now instead of having these cushioning and lubricating structures, you just have metal or plastic kind of grinding together. And if you've ever seen those TV commercials for attorneys that talk about people that have had uh, cancer and different side effects after joint replacements, it's because as that hardware rubs together, little pieces of the plastic and metal can actually come loose and they can get absorbed into your bloodstream and cause heavy metal poisoning and things of that nature. Now, I do want to be clear that most of the modern implants that are being used in the past few years are pretty darn safe. Uh, most of those issues came from the early to mid 2000s with things like uh, cobalt and nickel being used more commonly in these hardwares. And then there's also the risks of anesthesia. And it's not just that small risk of being put under anesthesia and not waking up, but a much more common condition called postoperative cognitive dysfunction which affects about 12% of people over 60 years old that undergo surgical anesthesia. And this is a condition where your body keeps the anesthesia in the system longer than it's supposed to. It doesn't metabolize it that quickly. So you can have memory loss and cognitive issues, and it can even increase your risk of suffering cerebrovascular events like strokes. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're 60 or older, avoiding uh, these side effects and drugs and complications uh, is definitely a good thing. And that's what we're here to do. We're not here to scare you. We're here to help you avoid these and provide a better alternative. And that better alternative is to treat the root cause of the problem. All the things we've discussed so far are treating the symptoms, not what actually caused the problem to start in the first place. Because osteoarthritis is a drying problem. 
And there's a very simple experiment you can do in the comfort of your own home to better understand this. Take a sponge, get it soaking wet, and try and rip it in half. You're not going to be able to. Crumple it up into a ball. It's going to spring back to its original shape pretty quickly. Now let that sponge sit for a day or two next to the sink to where it's still moist but no longer soaking wet. Now when you try and rip it, you'll probably be able to tear it. Crumple it into a ball. It's not going to spring back to its original shape the way it used to. Let it sit for another day or two until it's bone drawn. Now you don't even have to try to tear this thing. Just put it in your palm, close your hand, it's gonna crumble like dust. Why is this sponge so much weaker than it was just a few days earlier? At a chemical and atomic level, it's still the exact same sponge. It hasn't changed. All that changed was the hydration. And you see, we're made up mostly of water and water lends strength and pliability to a lot of the different structures within our body, including your ligaments and cartilage. So people suffering from osteoarthritis are not only dealing with this joint space getting closer and this friction causing more potential damage, but the structures that are there to withstand that damage also become weakened by not being properly hydrated and lubricated. So as this synovial fluid changes from very thick and oil-like to very thin and water-like, it's putting your body at a double disadvantage. You're going to have more friction and you're going to be less able to withstand it. So wouldn't it make sense just to fill the joint capsule back up with nice thick fluid again? This is not a trick question. This is what we're here to talk about today. A procedure called joint lubrication therapy, where a special injection bonds with your knee's synovial fluid to return that cushioning and lubricating property that it naturally has. And this injection is not like other injections you've had in the past, like cortisone. You see, cortisone is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. It dries things up. If you've ever had a sinus infection or a respiratory infection, you've probably been given prednisone or something like that. Here with COVID the past few years, there was a steroid called dexamethasone that was being given to people in the hospital to help dry up their lungs so that they didn't suffer from pneumonia and could get off those ventilators and sometimes even avoid them. So this medication works in a very similar way when you inject it. It reduces inflammation. It reduces fluid. It dries things out. So if osteoarthritis is a drying problem, cortisone is actually going to make it worse. Additionally, it's a very acidic injection. So if you've ever had one, it probably stung or burned. And it can actually break down the bone near the injection site up to 8% in as little as 120 days, leading to osteoporosis. Long-term use of cortisone can lead to cataracts developing in your eyes. And it's unsafe for diabetics because cortisone, its full name is actually glucocorticosteroid from glucose. It's a complex sugar. So when your body breaks it down, it increases your blood sugar levels, which is why if you've ever had a cortisone injection, maybe it was hard to sleep that night. Maybe you felt a little wired. You actually had a sugar high. So there are many potential side effects associated with cortisone, especially when it's repeated more than once. In fact, the FDA says you're only supposed to have three injections of cortisone in a single body system in your lifetime. How many of you had more than three in your knee? I know I did. And certain major medical facilities like the Mayo Clinic, which you can see a link to their study down here, are no longer using cortisone for osteoarthritis. They found out the risks outweigh the benefits. So even if you've had cortisone injections and they've not worked for you, joint lubrication may still work for you. A little food for thought. So better idea, let's just change the joint oil. This is a medical procedure called visco supplementation using FDA cleared medications like Genvisc 850 to bond with your synovial fluid and increase that joint space. And I'd like to play just a brief two minute video that shows the procedure actually taking place. Osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease, is the most common type of arthritis. With osteoarthritis, the surface layer of cartilage breaks down and wears away. This allows the bones under the cartilage to rub together, resulting in pain, swelling, and loss of motion of the joint. Although in some people it progresses quickly, in most individuals joint damage develops gradually over years. Visco supplementation therapy is a non-surgical outpatient procedure by which a pain relief medication called hyaluronic acid is injected into the knee joint. 
This medication mimics the body synovial fluid of the knee that lubricates the cartilage. Hyaluronic acid will help the knee to move smoothly, reducing or relieving the pain of osteoarthritis. In preparation for the injection, the physician sterilizes the knee and administers a local anesthetic. The physician positions an imaging device called a fluoroscope over the knee. The fluoroscope will display a moving x-ray of the inside of the knee that will ensure the hyaluronic acid reaches the joint space. The physician carefully guides a needle into the joint space. The physician confirms the placement into the knee joint with an injection of contrast dye. The contrast dye is clearly visible on the fluoroscope image. If the dye pools in the soft tissue at the front of the knee, the physician will adjust the depth and angle of needle placement until the joint capsule of the knee is reached. When the contrast dye flows throughout the joint capsule, the physician knows they are ready to inject the hyaluronic acid. While leaving the needle in position, the physician removes the contrast dye syringe and replaces it with a syringe filled with hyaluronic acid. The physician injects the hyaluronic acid into the joint space within the knee. The hyaluronic acid will bind with the synovial fluid inside the joint, cushioning and lubricating the joint. When the injection is complete, the physician removes the needle and bandages the knee. Ice is then applied to reduce swelling. Hyaluronic acid is administered in a series of five injections one week apart. Pain relief can be immediate and has been shown to last for six months or longer. In addition to the hyaluronic acid injections, knee bracing and physical therapy are utilized to enhance the effects of the medication. Now we always get two questions after that video plays. One is, does it only last for six months? Well, no, I made that video about eight or nine years ago. And at that point in time, most of the published research only followed up with patients for six months. Since then, there's been a research study that followed people for more than three years. And there was almost 2,000 people in this study. And at that three-year follow-up, more than 82% of them still had a reduction of pain improvement of function. So we know that the results from this injection actually last longer than the average results from surgical knee replacement. So this is not just safer and less costly and covered in full by most insurances, including Medicare, but also lasts longer. The other question we commonly get is, does it hurt? Because sometimes people have had cortisone injections and things in the past that were really painful. And I can tell you, no, this procedure doesn't hurt. I know because I've had multiple series since I was told I needed a knee replacement. I need to fill up every six or seven years once my symptoms start to come back. So I've gone through three rounds so far in my right knee. And we use two different types of anesthetics, numbing agents. One's a cooling spray called ethyl chloride that freezes the skin. So you don't feel the pinch of the needle breaking the skin. And then lidocaine 2%, not 1% like most facilities use. And that numbs the area up so that you don't feel the procedure taking place. The procedure feels like almost like someone's blowing a balloon up inside your knee because it's refilling that fluid that you're missing. You feel kind of a pleasant cushioning pressure that takes place when these injections are administered. And you might actually feel a little more stable and have a little more bounce in your step after the procedure. So just wanted to get those things out of the way in addition to the video. Now, what we're doing here, while the way we apply it is unique with the guidance to ensure it gets where it needs to go and the unloading knee brace to stop ongoing friction, hyaluronic acid has been used to treat osteoarthritis for many decades. In fact, it was originally created in 1982 in Italy and used on racehorses. And then it was begin to be used in humans in 1985. And it was cleared in the United States uh, by the Food and Drug Administration in 1997. Since then, there's been tens of millions of these procedures administered uh, worldwide, uh, including uh, many tens of millions here right in the United States with these various different products, very safe there's never been any serious adverse events or side effects reported, and the medications we use, like Genviscate 50, actually have no known side effects or allergic interactions. So your worst case scenario is that it doesn't get better, but it's not going to make it worse. Now, hyaluronic acid does three major things. It cushions your joint, it lubricates your joint, but most importantly, it binds with the fluid-producing cells called the synovocytes to stimulate them to start producing thick synovial fluid again, to make more hyaluronic acid on their own. So this is a semi-permanent solution. It is gonna change the underlying defect in your body and with exercise and so forth, these results can last for years, even decades. More good news, visco supplementation is actually not a drug. It's FDA cleared as a device 
because its mechanism of action is mechanical and it's not going to interfere with any medications you're already on. It doesn't, it's not known to have any side effects. It does not have any allergic interactions. It's so safe, it's actually used as a placebo in certain research studies, such as those for diabetic drugs, where sugar water or a sugar pill would be dangerous. They'll use hyaluronic acid instead. So if it sounds too good, you're probably wondering what's the catch. So I'd like to speak about that briefly. What if you've had other injections in the past that didn't work? I'd like to ask you a couple questions. What was injected? Not all these medications are made the same. There are, I think, 18 or 19 different medications that are FDA cleared right now. Some of them are a single injection. Some are three. Some are five. Some of them are all natural. Some of them are synthetic. Some of the earlier ones like Hyalgin and Suparts are actually derived from the comb of the rooster, that red crest. So these medications are different. It also matters how they're injected. If you've ever had these injections before and guidance wasn't used to see inside your joint like that video I played, there's a good chance it didn't actually get in your joint capsule. And because this is a thick gel-like substance, if it's not in that capsule, it will not work. So that's the leading reason these injections don't work is misplacement. We're able to guarantee that we do not have needle misplacement in our facilities because we use that small amount of contrast dye to confirm the placement before the medication is injected. Also unloading bracing helps tremendously. It basically acts like a scaffolding. If you've ever seen a historic building where the foundation was crumbling, the first thing the engineers do is put that steel scaffolding up around the building to hold it in place while they chisel out the old foundation and pour a new one. Once it cures and it's stable, the scaffolding comes down and the building safe again. Well, that's how the knee brace works. We use it to hold the joint space open temporarily while these injections we're doing rebuild that foundation of cartilage and synovial fluid so that you no longer need to wear the knee brace. This is not like braces you see on TV, like the copper fit or those sleeves. It's a specialized patented brace used to stop that mechanical friction. Lastly, two things stimulate your joint to create more hyaluronic acid. One is the injection of hyaluronic acid that stimulates those glands, the synovocytes, but the other is weight-bearing activity. So it's important to do exercise, to do therapy, even to just walk a little bit as you're undergoing this procedure, because that will stimulate those glands to produce more fluid on its own and eventually get your body back in the habit of making normal synovial fluid without any extra assistance. I also want to pick on one particular medication real quick called Synvisc. And that's because Synvisc has a separate active ingredient than the other FDA cleared Visco supplements. Its active ingredient is actually called hyalin, not hyaluronic acid. This is a chemically manufactured alternative to naturally occurring hyaluronic acid. And it's more risky and less effective. In fact, this is an excerpt from a research study published by the American College of Rheumatology. It says, in view of the likely lack of a superior effectiveness of hyalin over hyaluronic acid and the increased risk of local adverse events associated with hyalin, we discourage the use of intraarticular hyalin in patients with osteoarthritis of the knee. So to break that down, what are they saying? The American College of Rheumatology is saying that this medication is dangerous and it's not that effective and it should not be used in people that suffer from osteoarthritis. So if you've had Synvisc and it did not work, you're in the right place. These other medications are much more effective. And when they're administered in the specialized protocol we utilize, they're even more effective than how you might receive them in other places with a blind injection per se. And that's because we always use imaging. We never guess where we are. We know before we go. And according to the American Journal of Sports Medicine, 21% of injections into the knee actually fail to reach the joint capsule. So that means if you've had these injections before, let's say you had a single injection product like Synvisc one there's a 21% chance it didn't work because it didn't even get where it needed to go. So we eliminate that risk factor in our facilities. And this is a picture of an actual knee that was receiving the injection so that you can see what this fluoroscope image looks like. This line here that you see, that's the actual needle. And because we can see the needle, we know exactly where to place it. And we can keep it from hitting things like bone that are very painful. The contrast dye is what looks like the Batman logo with a little tail here. If it spreads out throughout the synovial capsule like this, the clinician knows they're in the right place to inject the medication. So this greatly enhances the effects of the procedure. 
And in our published clinical research trial of nearly 400 patients, only one person had no improvement and nearly 93% had a 50% or greater reduction of pain and improvement of function. So the odds are in your favor with the advanced arthritis relief protocol because our patented three-step approach is very unique and it addresses why these injections may not work in the past or in other applications. The guidance makes sure it gets where it needs to go. Using the appropriate medications that have the highest purity of ingredient, the best clinical data, along with the unloading knee brace and the home exercise protocol helps people to get much better results than they'll receive in other facilities. And the best part is this program's covered by most insurance, including Medicare. In fact, if you have Medicare in the secondary, there will be no out-of-pocket cost. If you have TRICARE for life, there's going to be no out-of-pocket cost. Many insurances cover this in full. I also want to show you how the knee brace works real quick because it creates instant results in most people. You can see and feel the difference right away. This is a medial bone on bone where the inside of the joint space has collapsed. This is only a few minutes later after the application of the knee brace. Not only does this open up the joint space, but it allows the medication that we've injected to penetrate that compartment, cushion and lubricate the joint, and not only stop pain and improve function, but give your body a chance to regrow some of that cartilage that has been lost because it's no longer being ground away. Here's a lateral loss of joint space with bone-on-bone -bone contact on the outside of the knee before and after the application of the brace. As you can see, again, we were able to open that space up. So knee bracing helps tremendously, and it's one of the contributing factors to why we can get results like this. This is the 86-year-old African-American female patient that we were speaking about earlier. She was very overweight. She was in a nursing home. She was confined to a wheelchair. She couldn't walk or even stand. And this was her knee before we treated her very badly bone on bone, large osteophytes beginning to fuse. She had an active um, fracture that wouldn't heal, very osteoporotic. She was not a candidate for surgery because this titanium rod she, inst she had installed from a previous femur break. Here's the same knee two years later. Not only is there some joint space, but you can see the increase in the density of the bone. Well, that's because she was able to move from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane to by the time we took this x-ray, she was walking under her own power again. She had lost over 60 pounds. She no longer had to be in a nursing home. She was able to be in an independent living facility. This didn't just reduce her pain and get her walking again, but she got her life back. Her COPD got better. Her heart disease got better. Her diabetes got better. All these chronic illnesses that she was struggling with because she couldn't move started to get better once she was able to move again. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it's not some outlandish result. It's a pretty common result, but it's also maybe the most complicated case we've ever seen. Your x-rays are almost guaranteed not going to look this bad. In many thousands of x-rays I've seen, this is by far the worst. So if we can get results like this, we can probably get results with you as well. So that brings us to the next step before I answer your questions, which is to schedule a risk-free, no-cost consultation. The purpose of this consultation is not only to find out about your condition and how it affects your life, because we want to know if you're getting back to trying to get back to golfing, there's going to be rotation, we're going to give you special exercises to strengthen those lateral ligaments. But we also want to make sure that you're a good candidate for this. And if you're not, we'll tell you the truth and get you to someone who might be able to help, like a pain management doctor or even an orthopedic surgeon. If you've already got x-rays or MRIs, bring them with you, we'll review them. And if you don't, you'll have the ability to get x-rays taken in the clinic after you go in for that consultation. So if you're ready to schedule this risk-free no-cost consultation, please type in yes, the city and state you're calling from, and the best phone number to reach you at into the chat box or the Q&A box. Now, the last thing I'd like to share with you before I answer your questions, so if you have any questions, you can either type them into the Q&A box, or if you want to ask those questions, just scroll your mouse over to the little control panel. There's a little hand there that says raise hand. Click on that, and I'll be able to unmute you so you can ask your questions. So while you're coming up with those questions, I want to speak for just a moment about regenerative medicine and a specific treatment called platelet-rich plasma. You see, in many people, such as myself, where we've worn through our cartilage, the body regrows cartilage in the joints very slowly because the joints don't have a strong blood supply, and the blood carries all of our building blocks little cells called fibroblasts that make soft tissue, stem cells, growth factors, 
they all travel to the sites of injuries through our blood. So there's a procedure called platelet-rich plasma where you can have harvest a very small amount of your blood and extract those growth factors and those healing elements and inject them near where your injury is. This allows the body to regrow cartilage and soft tissue much more quickly than it will on its own. This x-ray on screen is from one of our clients in Western Pennsylvania, just outside Pittsburgh. And this is an 88 year old male patient. It was very badly bone on bone. And this is his same knee three months later. All of that extra space you see there is from the regrowth of cartilage and the return of normal function. In fact, he was able to golf again, something he hadn't done in more than 17 years. So platelet-rich plasma is a very simple process where we're extracting the healing components of the blood. If you've ever cut yourself, after the red blood stops flowing, you might see a clear or yellowish fluid begin to form a scab. That's your plasma. The platelets are what come together to form that scab. And the plasma also carries growth factors in these cells called fibroblasts. That's what grows all the new tissue. So that a few days later, after that scab falls off, you've got fresh skin underneath there, where you used to have the cut. This treatment's very simple. We're extracting those same healing components from your blood and we're putting it right where your injury is to help the body heal itself more quickly. It's a fast, safe procedure because it's extracted from your own body. There's no side effects uh, and drug interactions. Uh, very safe, it's called an autologous therapy, a Greek word that means from the body. And this procedure is even starting to be covered by many insurances like TRICARE. So if you're military or the dependent of a military uh, member, this will be covered. And even some commercial insurances and certain Medicare plans are covering it. Even where platelet-rich plasma is not covered though, this is not a very expensive procedure. It's not thousands of dollars. Platelet-rich plasma is a couple hundred dollar procedure. The technology to harvest it and extract it has become much better, much more affordable and much faster than in years past. One of the first people to receive PRP in this country was Tiger Woods back in 1995. And he paid half a million dollars to a Canadian physician to come down and do that procedure. Well, this is no longer something that's reserved for celebrities and athletes and the ultra wealthy. It's something that's affordable for pretty much everyone. So the next step now is to schedule that risk-free no-cost consultation by typing yes, your location, and the best phone number to reach at in the chat or the Q&A box. With that being said, I see we have about a half a dozen questions here in the Q&A box I'll get to. And if anybody would like to ask any questions verbally, again, you can just click that button to raise your hand and we'll try and get to you. Hi, Clinton, Pat, I see that you raised your hand. We'll get to you in just a moment. Uh, and then again, since we have people from all across the country here, uh, I see Clinton, Pat are located in Oklahoma. You'll be calling Joint Restoration Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma at 918-303. 5633 or online at jointrestorationcenter.com. Now on to the questions. Uh, Diane from Colorado asks, how long is the brace worn? Great question, Diane. It depends on how bad your osteoarthritis is. If you're bone on bone, it's probably going to be worn for three months or longer. A lot like if you've ever had braces for your teeth. They have to be worn longer and tightened more if they are more crooked because we're moving that bone back into alignment. Now, if your osteoarthritis is very mild, you may only be wearing that brace for an hour or two after each injection and with activities that cause pain. So if you're about to go work in the garden or walk the dog, and you know that usually makes your knee flare up, you wanna put the brace on first because pain is your body's way of saying there's damage being done, stop. We don't wanna break down tissue, we're trying to regrow tissue with this procedure, definitely don't want to do anything that wears away that healthy tissue or that new tissue. Uh, Karen from Oklahoma asks, uh, she's had a hip replacement, uh, both of your knees are becoming more painful and less functional and as a result, would you need to start on your left knee or would you benefit by having your right knee first, then what about your hip? Great questions, Karen. So, the body is a, a chain that each of these organ systems, they don't operate independently. They all work together. That's why sometimes you go to doctors and they look just at the broken piece, but not at what's around it. If your hips out of alignment, if you have an injury of your foot or ankle, you know, that can affect your knee. So many times we see people with osteoarthritis knee and they have back pain because of their knee pain. They're moving more to one side or the other or favoring it. And that's throwing everything out of whack. And now they've got 
arthritis and disc degeneration in their spine as well. So we look at the entire biomechanical chain when you come in for your risk-free consultation. So if you have hip dysplasia, if there's a misalignment there, that'll be looked at. Regard your right and left knees. Start with the knee that's more painful and symptomatic and have the other knee done the following week. For people that are bilateral where they have osteoarthritis of both knees, you'll typically come in twice a week, once for your right knee, once for your left knee. These office visits are really fast. The procedure itself only takes about 90 seconds to perform. So you're in and out of the office in 10, 15 minutes, including the ice that's applied after the procedure and preparing you for the procedure. So it's a very fast procedure uh, and can be done pretty quickly. So you're not gonna spend a ton of time in the office and we can treat both of your knees at the same time. Leslie from Georgia asks where this done and how long recovery takes? Great question. So this is an outpatient procedure. You go into the doctor's office, you receive the procedure. After ice is applied, your brace goes on, you walk out the door. Again, it's usually a 10, 15 minute visit, not very long. Recovery is very fast. And I'm gonna define that in two ways. The first is you only have to avoid strenuous activity the day of the injection. You can return to normal activities the day after the injection, standing, walking, lifting, uh, within reasonable limits. You really don't wanna lift things over 50 pounds. You don't wanna go run a marathon. If you have a very laborious job, like working in a warehouse or something, you might wanna take a few weeks off while you're undergoing this procedure to let that cartilage heal and repair itself. But under most circumstances, you can return to work without limitation. You can exercise without limitation. Again, you just want to avoid really strenuous high impact activities like running on concrete or uh, doing squats or lunges. And the physicians and therapists are actually going to work with you in office to help you uh, learn what, what things you can do and can't do and how to do them and how to strengthen your muscles and ligaments so that as time goes on, you can return to all your activities without limitation. Deb's asking about the billing codes that we use to submit to insurance to see if it's covered. That's going to depend on what your insurance is. So if you have Medicare, there's no restriction on what medications can be used. But let's say you have Aetna or Blue Cross Blue Shield. They might have what they call a preferred product, which means the doctor's office has to get a prior authorization and the insurance company tells them what medication they can or can't use. So any questions about your insurance, your insurance coverage, please call into the office uh, or when you're called back to schedule your risk-free now cost consultation, give the office your uh, insurance information and they will verify your benefits and tell you what's covered and if there's any out-of-pocket cost, any copay, any deductible uh, before you go in for the procedure. Another question is, do I have to have an MRI? I can't deal with MRIs. No, MRIs are not required prior to this procedure. X-ray is required. And there is x-ray on site in the facilities. So that can be done as part of your consultation if you've not already had an x-ray done previously. The x-ray machines are wide open in an open space. You're not going into a tube or anything like that. I understand the feeling. My wife's very claustrophobic. Um, so you're not gonna have to get an MRI or anything like that prior to this being done. Uh, Dawn has had a couple different things done. You've had Synvisc, if you remember, that's one of the medications we spoke about not being the best, uh, as well as PRP and also stem cells and braces, and none of it has worked. Dawn, the primary thing I'll tell you is that it matters how you do this. If it's not done under guidance and you're not putting these things exactly where they need to go, you are definitely putting yourself at a disadvantage for recovery. Very few facilities use needle guidance to ensure this winds up in the right place. Also, not all braces are the same. There's braces that restrict range of motion or stabilize the patella. We're using a special patented brace that actually unloads the large bones, the femur bone and the tibia, the thigh bone and the shin bone to stop that friction and give your body a chance to recover without the, the further destruction of tissue. Uh, the other thing I'd like to answer, because Marilyn asked a question about this as well with stem cells, for those of you that have had stem cell procedures before, I just wanna explain briefly how stem cells work. Stem cells are your body's building blocks. When we're born, we're a cluster of stem cells and they're undifferentiated cells. It means a stem cell can turn into anything. It can turn into hair, muscle, tissue, brain, heart, liver. All of uh, the components of our body start out of these cells that are basically a blank slate. 
And as we age, we have less of these stem cells. It's why we heal slower. It's why our skin thins. It's why we bald and lose hair like I'm dealing with. We're making less stem cells as we age. So one of the newer procedures in medicine is to harvest or culture stem cells or take donor cells and put them into somebody who might have an injury. The problem is that those cells behave the same way they would in a regular person's body. Their job is to turn into other cells. And the first thing they do before they do that is something called homing. They're at attracted to cell death and inflammation called apoptosis. And then they tend to turn into the cells that are dying at the fastest rate. So let's say you've got osteoarthritis and you're bone on bone. The cells dying at the fastest rate are not cartilage, it's bone. So we've seen patients that go to get these stem cell procedures done. Maybe they spend $10,000, $20,000 to have these procedures done. And instead of regrowing cartilage, they just grow more bone. And their procedure gets worse, not better. So typically, if you're going to have something like stem cell therapy done, you want to do that after you're no longer bone on bone. You want to do that after the unloading is taking place, after the hyaluronic acid injections, uh, et cetera. Uh, June asks about the size of the braces. They are customized to each person to specifically fit your body and to help to unload your joint. In fact, oftentimes we'll take x-rays before and after to make sure we're getting that unloading and that opening of the space. Uh, Brenda asks if this also works on feet and ankles. Uh, the answer is yes, but. The medications are FDA cleared for use in the knee. Physicians are allowed to use FDA cleared or approved medications and devices, what's called off-label in different ways. But that's a decision that the medical staff's gonna have to make. So when you go in for your consultation, let them know that you're also dealing with osteoarthritis in the ankle and pain in your foot, and they'll evaluate that. Uh, and if they deem it clinically appropriate, it's possible that they can do these treatments there or other treatments they have access to in the office like platelet-rich plasma. Uh, Karen asks if you can drive with the brace on your knee. Yes, you can drive with it, you can run with it, you can exercise with it. A lot of our patients will actually wear the braces during their physical therapy and their exercise because uh, they'll have more stability and more confidence that they're not gonna cause damage. Uh, Christy from Georgia asks about injecting the chicken cartilage into the knees. Is this similar? I've heard it called so many things, rooster shots, chicken fat injections. Those are the original medications, hyalgin and suparts. They actually come from the comb of the rooster, that red crest, which is made of polyuronic acid, which is dissolved and purified and injected into the joints. While those medications are something we do have access to, there are newer medications that are made from bacterial culture processes and things of that nature that are a higher potency and purity. Those are typically the ones that are being used nowadays. The chicken shots were kind of the original ones uh, that first came to market many decades ago. Uh, Vana asks, can you do this if you're on blood thinners? The answer is uh, yes, but again, within limits, right? If you're on some of the older blood thinners like Coumadin or Warfarin, we're going to take your INR score because if you're not clotting properly, even a simple needle puncture can cause hematoma, these poolings of blood. Likewise, uh, if you're not on enough, it can cause clots to form and be dangerous. So if you're on any type of blood thinners, we're going to want your most current INR score or to redo that in office to make sure a simple needle-based procedure is safe. Now, this is no more risky than getting a flu shot or something of that nature, but even on heavy blood thinners, something like that can be dangerous. So depending on what medication, um, that'll be looked at by the medical team during your consultation and evaluation. Another question is, are the braces covered by Medicare and supplemental, and are they required? Uh, the answer is yes, and most of the time. Uh, Medicare and most commercial insurances will cover this. If you have Medicare and a secondary, you're typically going to have no out-of-pocket. The braces being required depend on how bad you are. If you've got a significant loss of joint space or you're bone on bone, if you have ligament damage, yes, the braces are going to be required. If you're earlier in the osteoarthritic cycle, then maybe the braces won't be required. And that's something that the medical staff is going to determine during your risk-free consultation. Last question in the Q&A box is from Dawn in Georgia. And it says, is the dye used, uh, does it affect people with kidney disease? Great question. And I'll answer it in two parts. Um, if you're on dialysis, 
it doesn't matter because all the heavy metals and things in your blood get cleaned up by the dialysis anyway. Um, so it's actually safe for those type of folks. Uh, if you've got an iodine sensitivity or you're allergic to shellfish, that's really more where the contrast dye may be uh, problematic and not safe. So that's something that the medical team is going to look at. And then we also have some non-iodine based dyes that can be used in people that do have sensitivities or kidney disorders. So I hope that answers all your questions. That was a lot of questions. I'm going to try and take, even though we're a little over on time here, I'm going to try and take at least one or two uh, of the questions verbally. So let me just get to the participant list. Um, starting with uh, Clint and Pat from Oklahoma. I see that you have your hand raised. I've, I've clicked to allow you to speak. So if you can just roll your mouse over the microphone and click on it to unmute yourself and fire away. Uh, yes, I just wanted to address the fact that my husband and I have both had total knee replacement surgery on one knee. But not the other. Right. Uh, Do you have symptoms on the other knee as well or? or just the one that had the surgeries? I have, I have been 10 months in excruciating pain with mine. His is just fine. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. So um, I'll, I'll help you out in two ways here. First is in your opposite knee, obviously both be candidates of any problems, but in a side where you've had the total knee replacement, your joint capsule has been removed from your body. So the naturally occurring hyaluronic acid and cushioning substances, they're not there anymore. So there's nothing for us to supplement. However, we are able to use platelet-rich plasma to reduce scar tissue. Oftentimes when people have knee replacements, they're trading one cause of pain for another cause of pain. Because when that procedure takes place, you're cutting through the skin, the muscle, the tendons, the ligaments, spreading them to put in this hardware. They put the drain in. There's a lot of trauma. And when your tissue heals, it tends to heal more densely than it was originally. If you've got a scar anywhere on your body, you can kind of touch it and feel how it's more thick and not as elastic as the skin around it. So sometimes the pain that people suffer from post-operatively with knee replacements is from that scar tissue. And platelet-rich plasma can break down scar tissue because by concentrating the platelets and the plasma and the growth factors in a small amount of the white blood cells, it causes your body to accumulate these cells called macrophages yeah. and monocytes, which actually break down scar tissue. So not only can that help reduce pain, but it can also help get your range of motion back and stability in the joint. So that might be a potential option for you. The knee brace may help. And then also some of the physical therapy modalities that we use, especially a home rehab device called the KneeMD can be used after knee replacement surgeries because your ligaments tighten up after knee replacement surgery too. It's called a contracture. And that device helps to stretch those ligaments and break down the calcifications inside the ligaments so you can get that range of motion back. And these ligaments, as they become uh, calcified and contracted, can be very painful too. So you'll have to undergo a physical examination to get to the root cause of what's causing your pain there. Uh, that way, one of these options can potentially be used but just because you've had a knee replacement and it didn't work uh, does not mean that some of these treatment options will not work for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. All right, so that looks like I got to all the questions so far. Um, so again, I'd like to thank everybody for your time here today. I hope you were able to learn something new about osteoarthritis and these potential non-surgical solutions. I just want to close on the contact information for the risk-free, no-cost consultations again, and I implore you to take advantage of this. If you go in for your consultation and this doesn't sound like it's right for you and you may not be a good candidate, there's no cost. If it progresses to the exam and the x-ray to determine if you're a candidate, that'll be billed to your insurance, but you really do have a risk-free opportunity to go speak with an experienced health professional about this. So if you'd like to do that, please type in yes, the city and state you're located in, the best phone number to reach you at into the chat box or the Q&A box, or you can call the local facility near you. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, it'll be Joint Restoration Center at 918-303-5633 or online at jointrestorationcenter.com. Thank you again for taking the time to meet with us here today. And I hope that these risk-free consultations are the first step in your recovery process as it once was for myself. I'd also like to let everyone know that today's presentation has been recorded 
If you have a friend, a family member, a coworker, or anyone else you might know that's suffering from chronic and debilitating osteoarthritis, please free, feel free to share this with them. You can put in your email address to get a copy or let the new patient coordinator know when you speak with them you'd like a copy. We are trying to change the world one knee at a time here, uh, beginning with yours. But if you know anybody else that could benefit from this, please spread the word because our unique patented approach, it's still uh, new in the grand scheme of things. Even though we've been doing this for more than 15 years and we've helped hundreds of thousands of patients, big picture nationwide, there's still many, many millions of knee replacements getting done. So lots of people that don't know that this option exists. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you'll share the information with anyone that this might be able to help. Thanks again, and I wish you all the best of luck on your recovery and hope you're able to get back to pain-free function just like myself and so many before you with osteoarthritis have been able to with the help of the Advanced Arthritis Relief Protocol. Thanks again and have a great day.